Okay, so getting back to the uh, chain drive on the Gimbal Maze prototype. So I've mounted the new sprockets in place on this one section anyway. There are three equivalent sections. And I'm liking the new sprockets. So now we just have to get back to raising up the chain section, because right now it, it comes down and it protrudes down into the working area of the maze, which would be in here. Um, and also it needs, we need a tensioner anyway. And so once we have a tensioner, we might as well use it to push the chain up out of the way, which um, gives more room for the maze, and I think we'll just look nice generally. So I've been kind of out here poking at it for a bit, and I think I have an idea for what I'm going to do. So we have these uh, idler sprockets with their own uh, bearing in there, quite nice. So those will mount onto this uh, three-quarter inch square tube. Just can just weld on more of those nuts. They can bolt on. The nice thing about that is um, by moving the bolt in and out a little bit with the jam nut in there, I can adjust the, uh, the spacing out because of course it has to be, the sprocket has to be the exact right distance out. And uh, given the weird mounting here and everything, getting that exactly right the first try, I mean, I'll do my best, but it's nice to have some leeway on that. Now, so that's how we mount the sprockets. And then for the adjustment plate, I have a whole bunch of this half inch square rod. Um, I use it for blacksmithing a lot. It's sort of one of my standard um, bits of stock around the shop, which since this is eighth inch walled, three quarter inch tube happens to fit very nicely inside or will once I clean up this grody old piece. So this can slide up and down on this shaft. I'll put another one of these nuts on the top, just weld it on. And then I can just screw in this bolt, you know, through there. And that will, as it screws in, it'll push down on the top of this mandrel piece, pushing this up giving me the tension I need on the chain drive. Um, so, going to get started on that. We're going to need, all this is multiplied by three, um, though you'll probably only see one getting made uh, because there are, but yeah, there are three places on it where this is needed. So, i um, going to cut down to some of this stock and this, clean it up, start, uh, start welding it up. Okay, here we are at the uh, chop saw. Time to cut this up, and uh, no, it's loud. Okay, it's time to start welding the, uh, the nuts on top of here. Again, plain steel nuts made for good for welding. Just right on top. And what I'm going to do is uh, leave it threaded on one of the, the screws here so that I can make sure that that'll guarantee it's at least well enough aligned that this can screw all the way in, which is really all I care about. Because remember, all this is doing is screwing in and pushing on this, on this uh, half inch mandrel that will be inside. So if it's a little bit out of alignment, I don't really care as long as I can screw it all the way in the, up to that point. So with this on there and in there, I know that no matter how the alignment is, it'll work. So 
I think that's good enough. And we're just going to mount these kind of awkwardly in the vise here. There. And that's that's good enough for this. I can at least uh, tack it tack it in a couple places, and then uh, remove it and maybe weld it up a bit better. But uh, again, doesn't really matter for this. Not a lot of st stress on that. So, um, and last time I did this, the welding wasn't hugely visible. I'm going to try twisting my helmet around a little bit to make that work a little better. Just trimming off the MIG wire. Okay, let's see if I can make this work. Ah! <laughs> okay, what a great opportunity to learn something here because that sounded terrible and if you look at it, let's get it over here in the light for you. Um, if you look at that, it's really a grody weld. Lots of porosity, bubbly. That's not actually showing up very well. Anyway, it's nasty. And the reason it's nasty is I forgot to turn the gas on. So, good lesson. Turn on the gas, dummy. Let's try it again. Not a lot of harm done since I noticed quickly. So, good lesson. That's what I'll tell myself. Let's try it again. Much better. Yeah, see? See the two? One on the left is good, the one on the right is crap. No strength, that's just crap. Okay, so do this for the rest of them. Okay, I have uh, all three of those welded on and uh, works fine. So the next thing, we need to weld the uh, nuts that where the uh, sparkers themselves were mounted, they are in about there, three inches apart. And that'll be pretty simple. Boop, boop. Okay, welding these nuts on. One there, one there. enough for these purposes and the other one I scribed some lines on here to tell me where to put them but again it doesn't actually matter that much just you know being a perfectionist okay and now that they're in place, a couple more worlds and we're done. Okay, looks good. Let's do the other two. Okay, all three of the sparket mounts are done. They work like this. I'm going to spark it up there. Um, I'll probably change out the the screws on here, but you can see the uh, spacer nut in there. So if I want to move this whole thing out, for instance, like this, I can, and it's still snug on there because those two are, are there. Uh, but uh, these are just some, some bolts that I had on hand. So, and then on top we have our adjustment. Moving it out, pushing this whole thing up in a way, pinching the cables coming over here, the, the chains. So that's looking good. Now we just need to mount it on the, uh, the gimbal ring itself. So I'm just setting things up for welding the uh, half inch mandrel on. And uh, sometimes this is the trickiest part and you've really got to get it right. So this needs to be in the center of this beam. It needs to be true in this axis and in that axis. 
And it's just on this little half inch edge here, so there isn't a lot to clamp it onto to make sure that it's not twisting around. So I think I've got it here. I'm using this uh, magnetic brace, which I then use the, uh, the ruler to make sure that it's flush on both sides. So that gives me my planar reference for the top uh, of what I'm welding to. And then I used the right angle on the, the straight edge to orient it in this axis. So now it should be dead on here, dead on this plane, and since I marked it before I started, right in the center. So I think that's good enough. Remove the semi-precision instrument from here, and uh, we can weld it in place. And we have it mounted. Um, the chain still hasn't been sized properly, but uh, of course, until I do that, there's no point in tension yet, but uh, I think that's actually going to work. Just need to weld on the other two mandrels and then reassemble the entire um, gimbal frame. So I have the uh, other two welded on on the big external frame, the uh, external gimbaling ring. The mandrels are welded on. So it's time to start cutting chain to test it out. So here's the number 35 chain we're using. I've marked the uh, link where I want to cut it. So first I'm going to slice through it to get rid of the part I don't want, and then we're going to grind off the rivet there so I can drive it out. Now it's time to drive that rivet out. See, there's a, a pin going through there. So we're going to take a driving punch, drive it out, and then we'll have two sections that we can use together. And to use this, I'm using this uh, anvil that I made years ago um, for doing exactly this. It's, uh, it's a series of holes for number 35 and number 40 chain. So those are what, 3 eighths and 1 half inch apart, whatever the pitch is for those, I think that's right. Um, and the purpose of that is it lets the, uh, the, heads of the, the heads of the rivets sit in there so it can be kind of nice and snug and it actually kind of stands up almost on its own without clamping. And then this one is drilled out so that the pin has room to go down into it when I, when I punch it out. So let's try it. This, it's sort of a trial and error process and sometimes takes a while and sometimes it goes real fast, so we'll see how it goes. There it goes. It is starting to go. The top ring has come off and you can see it's now open in there. And I just need to drive it the rest of the way down. There we go. Now it's free. And there's what's left. So, we now have our section of chain here. We just need to link it together into one continuous loop. Make sure that it's laying flat, there's no twists in it, though that's pretty hard on a section of roller chain this short. Take a, a master link here, which is just a little U-shaped section like that. The other side that goes over it, and a clip that holds it all in place. So we've linked those two together, put the uh, connecting link on the other side, and now we just need to get this clip in place. And this is kind of the tricky part, because it doesn't want to go on easily. And what it does want to do is fly across the room and disappear. Um, there are probably better techniques. What I've always found works best for me is a pair of needle nose pliers. Clip. Okay, we got lucky that time. And it didn't go flying across the room. So there, we have one completed loop. Here's that loop put on the first of the, the test pieces. And by turning this, and I ended up using a carriage bolt because I needed a longer bit of thread. I might 
change that out later. It's just for testing right now. Um, so it's turning that down. It's now pushing down on that mandrel, which is moving all this up. And you can see the chain start to tension. And I think it's working pretty well. I haven't uh, spaced these out particularly well yet. They just have a nut in there for the spacer. So that doesn't look terribly bad. Let's see. They're a little bit too far. You can see that that can't if it goes up to there. There's some that might be bad welding on my part. I think the mandrel might be sliding out a little bit. But um, I can fix that at least some by spacing this back. But at least as far as the tensioning goes, I think it's working really well. Again, a carriage bolt is not the optimal thing here, but it doesn't actually need to be adjusted that much, hopefully. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It needs some adjustment. It's starting to bind a little bit because they aren't quite in line, like I said, but not bad. And all three are now mounted. We're, we're done, at least for now, of course. Um, I have it clamped in the vertical position, so only two of the axes are live, but it makes a better demonstration that way. But um, you can see it works. So now we have this external lever. It goes through here, through our angle drive, to this chain drive, down across these tensioners we just added down to this sprocket through right angle drive, through the slip joint to another right angle drive, sprocket, tensioner, sprocket, right angle drive, and out. So this is where the inner maze would actually mount. And of course, this is a pretty small space, but I'm just prototyping the linkage here. That's all I really care about. But that means that if you watch that shaft there, as I rotate this input, There it is rotating, and it'll do that no matter what orientation these are all in. It's still a bit stiff. There's a lot of friction in here, mostly because uh, this slip joint is just two shafts, two cold rolled shafts right inside each other. Um, it's oiled, of course, but still a lot of friction. And the final one, you know, those will be proper bearings in there. But uh, my lathe hasn't arrived yet, so I can't really do that very well. But so that's one axis the inner one. And then we want to also be able to rotate that outer or the middle ring, maze, inner ring, outer ring. So if we rotate the inner ring, it goes through that, through this shaft up to that right angle drive, sprocket, tensioner, sprocket, right angle drive, external lever. Eventually there'll be more linkage out here, but that doesn't matter. But that means that if I rotate this, that inner one starts rotating, just like that. And the great thing is, so now if I free the outer ring to rotate freely, um, it'll swing around because it's not, I haven't balanced the weight entirely. It doesn't really matter at the moment, but like here, different orientation, I can still rotate that inner ring. Likewise, if I go over here and turn this one, uh, oh, <laughs> shows me jumped, lost the chain there. Haven't uh, aligned the sprockets entirely well. I need to get the spacing in and out a little bit better. Um, and just generally the uh, alignment is not what it could be. But for proof of concept of the gimbaled maze, this is really coming along. And compared to where it was a couple weeks ago, I am really happy. So hopefully I'll post some more work in a couple weeks. Um, my new lathe, which will be going here, um, that's arriving later this week. So I'm going to be consumed with setting that up and frankly, learning how to use it properly. I haven't been on a real lathe in many, many years. So um, I'm looking forward to that, but it's definitely going to take away from uh, gimbaled maze work. But uh, this is coming along. I mean, the end goal here is to get a art grant submission in next January, maybe run a Kickstarter for the full, you know, three meter across version. I haven't quite decided yet, but you know, big. So stay tuned.